So a device like the Huawei Mate 30 Pro is one that a lot of people haven't covered. I have done some coverage on this device and I gladly uh, please go check it out because this is a well-built smartphone. Uh, and I think in, in three months of using this device, uh, I really like what they've brought to the table with it. Uh, you've got a display that is very vibrant, 6.53 inches. It does have a notch, uh, but you can hide that with the right wallpaper like this Baby Groot wallpaper you see in here. Uh, if you're a big fan of Baby Groot, please raise your hands up. I know he's not beginning a lot of love because of Baby Yoda, but it's still a vibrant display. You look around the device, the way it's styled, the way it even just fits in the hands is really nice. Uh, there's a single power button and that's it. Uh, because you've got this waterfall display that really curves the edges to the side. But the, and the touch detection is really good. And that comes into play, especially with volume controls. You're going, okay, how do I turn on or lower increase the volume? Uh, top right or left hand side, you can double tap there to access the volume controls. And that gives you uh, some really fluid uh, volume action. Now, I will say they've done a lot of uh, work improving sending software updates and that's uh, fixed maybe some of the things where some people have said that it's not that easy to, you know, go ahead and activate that. But because of the waterfall display and the fact that this device uh, recognizes both display, the display as being two with, of course, the side as one, this gives you a remappable area. And I like that fact that we have that because when it comes to gaming, uh, this allows you to use that as triggers. So playing games like PUBG Mobile, uh, where, of course, using triggers is really important, makes sense, or Call of Duty Mobile, it makes a whole lot of sense to have that. And I like that you can remap it. It's pretty easy. It's very self-explanatory. And again, it's them using what they've done here with design. Now it's powered by the Kirin 990 processor. You've got eight gigs of RAM, 256. There's now a new uh, 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 512 gigabyte uh, variant, but that processor does a really good job, especially when gaming. Um, you know, Call of Duty Mobile. Yeah, some people say it's not a power hungry device. Runs really smooth. Uh, PUBG Mobile as well does a really good job and runs smooth. I had no issues, and it doesn't heat up as much as you think. I think if you want to see more of that in gaming details, I've got other videos definitely just hit the link and uh, check it out. But, I, you know, I, I like the fact that, you know, combination of processor, what they're thinking to use with display makes a whole lot of sense. Now, when you're doing all that gaming and you've got a new processor, you're thinking about battery performance. How's my battery performance uh, weighed over time? This thing is excellent. This is the best battery performer of an Android device, period. Now, I know the new iPhone um, 11 Pro Max has probably one of the best. I haven't compared both of them, but I'll say it's on par with that and it just, it it really is good. Standby time is ridiculous. If you have this device, you can go a whole day, I mean, full 24 hours, and you will be fine with your performance with this. Whether you're watching content, you're watching video on this display, um, and video looks really good on this, you will get a really great battery life, or even if you're gaming as well. Now, speaking of that battery, uh, Huawei has a couple of options to, of course, recharge the 4500 milliamp battery. You've got a 40 watt charger that takes about an hour and between hour and five hour, 10 minutes, which is great, which is really good. I think that's an hour and three minutes, which is which is really good. Uh, and, uh, you know, I did a couple of battery charge tests, which you guys can go ahead and take a look at all of those uh, and shows you how well this performs. But it also has the fastest wireless charging, at least available now. Uh, and when it comes to wireless charging, a 27 watt wireless charger, which charges this device in an hour, 30 minutes. That's it. That's how fast it wireless it charges. That to me is really, really good. It's quite impressive. And even the reverse wireless charging is faster this time around. Uh, we, you know, we did a video comparing that with the Galaxy and the Galaxy does uh, the Pixel 3 uh, from zero to 100. It wirelessly charges that in um, in 30 minutes, we get about maybe 7%, while the Mate 30 Pro does 15%. Again, that is quite impressive. I think these are the kind of things that make the hardware really, really good on this device, right? Uh, and also you've got really good audio. Um, and just take a quick look at, listen to the uh, sound sample here from the Mate 30 Pro. So when you think about a device like this, 
hardware is very important, right? When you think about smartphones and using it, you know, using it for about three months, I've experienced some really good visuals. I've experienced really good uh, gaming performance, which is, is what I like to do a lot. Um, uh, usability, you know, something that's really important as well. Uh, we know that this doesn't come with Google services here, uh, as also in China, because also this device is not available in the US. Uh, and it's also limitedly available in Europe. And most Chinese devices in China just don't really use Google services in the first place. Uh, but we understand the political ramifications of all of that, and they're just stuck in a rock and a hard place. But you can find it with Google services installed for you, and using it with it has been a breeze. I've got Google services here. I've had no issues whatsoever. I've been getting updates, updating my apps, um, you know, using my apps as I want to. So those things work really well for me and uh, it's been fine. But, you know, uh, I think a lot of people might be misconstrued in thinking, you know, you know this device, um, you know, may not be able to get those kind of updates, especially if you have to sideload Google services and that's not an issue. Now. The big thing, of course, is the camera. New camera modules, two RYYB sensors, an ultra wide, uh, and you've got uh, one of the things I was really impressed with the camera is the uh, improved video. Video looks much better this time around. Uh, better stabilization, better colors. Uh, you know, so when you're recording video, you get a really good, uh, especially 4K60 also looks really good on this. But here's the thing. What about photos? Now, you know I do a camera video with my buddy Man Rancel, and I was supposed to do one on this device separately. I couldn't because I had a lot of technical issues. So we've combined it with this video, and um, uh, I, I, I'm, going to I'm going to pass that on to Marion so you can see what he talks about with the camera. But before we get there, I've got to say the hardware itself on the Mate 30 Pro uh, is fantastic. Uh, I, I want to see why we continue this. Hopefully software things get fixed, of course, with the Google Play issues but I like what I'm seeing here. Now let's see how well the camera does in taking photos because there's a lot of competition here and then we'll round up this video. I have my buddy here, Marion Sell. Hello. Yes, and we will be covering the Mate 30 Pro camera. We were supposed to do a full camera review. We kind of did it, I had a lot of technical issues with my audio. So of course that video didn't come up, but there are some things we want to talk about the camera, which I will say has to be polite, mixed results in a yes, sense? Very much so, yes. Yeah. Shall I? Yeah, go ahead. Yes, go ahead. So we, um, I tested the camera when kite surfing and all of that, I did night mode tests and so on. And I want to generally say that the phone itself has a really nice, a nice feel to it. Like, um, the, the pro mode is good. Um, the technical information on the files is great. You, you're shooting DNG, which is a digital negative when you're shooting raw files. All of that is great. Um, the long lens is uh, 8 megapixels and the shorter lenses are 12 or even 40. Uh, 40 you can switch 40, 40, 40, 40, 40 both of them. Yeah. Okay, yes. Um, so, and the, the files that are coming out of the, um, the 8 megapixel long lens are great, RGB files. Um, the two sensors for the regular lens as well as the wide angle lens are RYYB sensors. Mm -hmm. So once again, as in the beginning of this year, you're a little bit in trouble when you're shooting raw files with color calibration because you would technically you'd have to go ahead and uh, shoot a color card and then have a profile that you that you put on your files. But all of this is very complicated. Once you get into the pro mode and into, into the raw file shooting, you're actually stuck with a white balance that is far off. But that's not the worst problem. The worst problem is actually that the raw files are not really raw files. Basically what's happening is that the RYYB files are being converted into RGB files and you get the basically what they call a raw file, RGB file. But in the middle of it, in the, uh, when the files are being transformed from RYYB to RGB, there's an algorithm as well as artificial intelligence coming in and Huawei does something what they call demosaicing or something like this. And basically what happens is that all the raw files from those two lenses, except the long lenses, uh, look really, really bad. So you zoom in and you expect pixels as you do when you look at photographs. But in this case, you, you look at some sort of uh, scenario, it looks a little bit like an oil painting already. So it's not raw files. So you don't get raw files out of those uh, big sensors. Yeah. Uh, basically for me, when Right. I took photos, I had fun with the phone because it has a good feel and editing is fun and all of that. But once I saw this and um, once you see it, you can't unsee it. It's in all the files. Um, 
basically it made the phone useless to me. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a bit rough um, on that aspect. And the funny thing is what Marion showed me too, I started seeing it and you know, I was like, ah, oh, come on, please. I didn't want to see yeah. this, but it, it, it's, the, it's, it's in the shots, uh, the raw files. Now, the JPEGs on the other hand, uh, yeah. how would you rate the JPEGs on here? Well, the, the JPEGs from the RYYB sensors are, are the white balance is not off uh, compared to the raw files you're getting. Yeah. But you also have the deinterlacing or demosaicing or whatever yeah. they call it. It's also in there, so I, I couldn't unsee it. Once I've seen it, I couldn't unsee it. Maybe it's the future, maybe, you know, where we can all get used to demosaic files instead of grainy <laughs> files. But as of right now, I'm like conservative, if you want to call it like that, but I like my grainy files and uh, yeah, I can't, can't stand the files that are coming out of the Huawei, unfortunately. And I wanted to add two more things that is um, the super slow motion that the phone does is mind blowing. You can take a, well, you just aim the phone at, for example, a fly, and then when the fly takes off. Fly? You can just aim or, it. Or a cat. Alaska here. And um, there. the moment the action is hap happening, the phone does the slow motion for you. You don't even have to click the button anymore. And it's absolutely mind blowing. You get like, out of a, a half second, it, it translates to, I guess, eight seconds or something like it's this. Something, it's yeah. really crazy. I think it goes up to 7,000 frames per second, according to what. Yes, well, well, if, you, if, you, if you pay close attention, you'll see that it's digitally enhanced, of course, but it's, it's still you impressive. You can do amazing things. Um, another thing that I think was important to say is that the whole, uh, the whole thing about this demosaicing that we talked about in the quad sensor, the RYYB sensors, uh, we, we hesitated to put out conspiracy theories because in the beginning, we didn't really, once we saw whatever's happening in the files, we didn't really know what it was. So we reached out to Huawei mm -hmm. and actually Huawei responded to us and explained to us that there's this artificial intelligence algorithm that does the demosaicing whilst translating from RYYB to RGB and they advertised it as a beneficial thing but unfortunately for me personally, a prof professional perspective, it destroys the file. If you're posting social, it will look really, really nice. But we're giving this a professional review. Yeah, so exactly. It's, it's not good. <laughs> yeah. Um, I was trying really hard to like the phone because the earlier Huawei's, they were really, really, really good uh, comparing to Samsung iPhone and so on. They're really up there. And now this one had a big downgrade. And I hope it's only a software thing and maybe they're going back to regular file treatment, but as of right now, yeah. Yeah. So at least from my, at least my uh, viewpoint and thought, thoughts here is that look, it probably is a software thing, as you said, to, to, to some degree to fix that. Uh, because of that conversion from RYYB to RGB, or also, hey, while we maybe go back to our RGB sensor uh, at 40 megapixels, you had that with the Mate 20 yeah. Pro, and that did a really good job. The same thing, it wasn't on the P20, but it was on the Mate 20 Pro. So, till next year, when we will have videos on new devices like the S11, which has is supposed to have a 108 megapixel sensor, um, Huawei's. P40 Pro, which should have an awesome uh, camera sensor from all the, at least from things I'm hearing, and lots more, which of course Marion will be checking out. Okay. So I want to thank Marion at least for helping out with the review of the camera. Go ahead and check his uh, Instagram and also his website. Mm -hmm. uh, it's Marion Cell, the links are down below. And thank you very much. Yeah, thank you guys. See you soon.